Hello everybody, this is the M-Crew Dude. Merry Christmas. I hope you're all having a healthy and happy holiday. Let me just say that 2020 has been a very miserable and crappy year for all of us. Ahem. 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 For those reasons and many more, I cannot wait for it to be over. I hope I can help spread some joy by looking at a nostalgic TV special from the early 90s. I'm a wild green guy living under the bed. I gotta look the sock before you turn your head. Like a boat to life. I'll make it hard to. My name is Mr. Bumpy. I go bump, bump, bump. He goes 100 miles an hour. He's green dynamite. His name is Mr. Bumpy and he goes bump in the night. This anxiety induced fever dream is bump in the night. Not to be confused with the novel of the same name. Seriously though, don't look that up. Bump in the Night is a stop-motion animated series by Danger Productions and Greengrass Productions that ran from 1994 to 1995. The show was picked up by ABC until Disney acquired it where the show was broadcast on Toon Disney for a few years until 2001. The show centers around a green monster named Mr. Bumpy, voiced by Jim Cummings, who lives under a child's bed while eating leftover socks. That's kind of his whole thing. Ah, socks are good for me, Squishment. Rich in fiber and low in calories. His best friends are a toilet-dwelling slimy monster named Squishington, voiced by Rob Paulson, and a Frankenstein-ish comfort doll named Molly Coddle, voiced by Gail Mathias. Some of the recurring characters include an authoritative toy robot named Destructo, also voiced by Jim Cummings, and a con artist bug named Phil Silverfish, voiced by Danny Mann. I do remember liking the show quite a bit when I was a kid for its expressive animation, absurd humor, and music, even though a few of the songs were just parodies. Some of it holds up okay, but there are a lot of dated elements such as the constant repeating segments of animation. The series ended with an hour-long holiday special that was released on December 9th, 1995, and I actually remember it quite fondly. To put this into context, I was three years old when this first aired. I haven't seen it in ages, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out again. Does it stand the test of time, or should it be left under the bed? Well, let's take a look at it. This is Twas the Night Before Bumpy. The special opens as everyone is preparing for their annual Christmas pageant. Rather than rehearsing, Mr. Bumpy has set up various traps in the house to capture Santa and get his hands on his magic red sack. And that is not an intentional sex joke. Molly tells Mr. Bumpy that Squishington is downstairs looking for him, so Mr. Bumpy rushes down to stop him from setting off his traps. Where are you? It is time to rehearse your big number. <laughs> are you hiding my bushes, Mr. Buddies? You wouldn't be in the chimney, would you? Hello? Holy crap, where did he get a missile? Squishington then gets attacked by the closet monster, which is a sentient pile of clothes that eats just about anything. I guess the family doesn't bother with laundry either. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bumpy. No disrespect intended. By the way, could you save me? Please! Hey, closet monster! Special delivery for you! Christmas present. <laughs> Weird. That present should have been crammed full of nitroglycerine. You mean like this one? And he also acquired nitroglycerin? What, does the family get weekly munitions deliveries, or does Bumpy have access to their credit card info? Actually, maybe he had the right idea. Squishington then goes on about how much he wishes he had feet because his lifelong dream is to tap dance. Seems a bit illogical since he's physically incapable of it, in fact, he can dance, as seen several times in the show, but it's tap dancing in particular. The one thing he can't do is what he wants the most. Ah, Squishy. Maybe Santa will bring you something to help. Really? You think he has a spare pair of feet in his bag for me? Have no fear, Squish. That bag is mine, and what's mine is yours. After markup. Bumpy, you tried to get the bag last year, and the year before that. <laughs> you try every year. And why not? This is the year I'm gonna get it! Gotta have them! Gotta have them all! Christmas is about more than just presents, Bumpy. What? Oh, yeah, 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 I knew that. Gee, I can only guess what his mindset on this will be by the end of the movie. 
We then break into one of the many songs in this special, and I will admit that most of them are okay. Unfortunately, the first song is a bit of a cop-out. They try to parody 12 Days of Christmas, but they don't even bother to sing the entire song. So Mr. Bumpy decides to travel to the North Pole in an attempt to acquire feet for Squishy, but more importantly presents for himself, and he puts Molly in charge of the pageant. Due to their incompetence, the two end up somewhere in South America and hopelessly lost in the rainforest. My unerring sense of greed tells me that we're heading to the North Pole! What more do you want? Uh, the compass might come in handy right about now. Compass bumpers! Look, if I'm wrong about this, I'll eat the map! Well, it's not bad. A little spicy in Thailand. I hope you're satisfied. Oh, you missed the peninsula. The two then get confronted by a Spanish-accented worm voiced by Cheech Marin named General Joaquin Gusentino Sinmanos. Yeah, I looked it up, so what? And he decides to take them as prisoners. As he tries to instruct them to attack a spiky bush, yes, I said that, he starts to lament about his lack of arms. Even his name means little worm without hands, so already that's salt in the wound. Mr. Bumpy then makes a deal with him that he will get him a pair of bionic arms if he can dig to the North Pole. The general quickly agrees, and we have another song. Peanut butter's great with jelly, fa la 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 la. Underarms are good and smelly, fa la 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 la. Santa, please bring me a present, fa la 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 la. I'll admit, it's not bad, but a reoccurring issue with the animation is that it constantly repeats, especially when it doesn't make sense in context. Like this one part here that I swear I did not edit. I just find it to be distracting, especially when a lot of care and effort is put into the character movements and expressions. I mean, I know why this was done, and repeating segments of animation is a very common practice, but come on, they really couldn't have done a better job at hiding it? Back at the pageant, nobody seems to take Molly seriously as the new pageant director until she snaps and demands a good performance on the spot. Once I had a dreidel, I made it out of clay. When it was dry and ready, a dreidel I did play. When I was in my cradle, I made you out of clay. I loved you then, my dreidel, but where are you today? Again, and this time, be merry or else! Mama, I love it! Good lord, I've seen YouTube comments with less piss and vinegar. Meanwhile, Mr. Bumpy and Squishington follow the general but end up somewhere in England. They are quickly met by a hyperactive hummingbird who somehow manages to destroy part of Stonehenge and topple it onto the general. Is it safe yet? <laughs> My poor cabeza! Mr. Worm, are you all right? <coughs> wow, he's you, Custard. Well, I guess it's up to me to have his present. Mr. Bumpy. Hey, he would have wanted it this way. So Doris the Hummingbird, also voiced by Jim Cummings, starts complaining about her high metabolism while constantly flying, which gives Mr. Bumpy an idea. He turns Squishington into a cheeseburger. Makes sense to me, what's your problem? and uses him to motivate Doris to fly them towards the North Pole. Unfortunately, her appetite gets the better of her, and the two fall, only to land in the snow. Jingle bells, bumpy smells, which is made of clay. Santa's beard looks awful weird, he might wear it to play. Jingle bells, Santa dwells deep in the North Pole. We went to swipe his bag of toys and fell into a hole. So right after that song, we are quickly greeted with another song, as Mr. Bumpy and Squishy finally reach Santa's fortified military base. We're Santa's first line of defense, that's all you need to know. We fight with utter confidence, although we're only snow. We got the man in red who lives inside this bungalow. We're providing security for toys, guarding the toys. 
I will say that this is the best song in the special. It's a parody of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, but its tone and lyrics are different enough to still be enjoyable. So they sneak into the fort by disguising themselves as a snowman, only to get caught shortly after. What's the big idea? This is a restricted area. You lost or something? Uh, well, if you're gonna be nosy about it, uh, he pushed me. Oh, did he now? Always a joker in the deck, huh? All right, from now on, you are strictly snowman, second class. Of course, we can't abide squealers either. Always like slushies. Never thought I'd end up as one. So the monsters get cornered by two groups of military snowmen with aim so bad they must have learned it from the Stormtrooper Academy, and Mr. Bumpy and Squishington escape through a convenient hidden door that literally just so happened to be there. By the way, the snowmen continue to shoot at one another long after they're gone for some reason. Good snowmen are so hard to make these days. The two follow a few blatant signs that are somehow not obvious traps, but perfectly positioned to guide potential thieves to the bag. Hasn't Santa learned anything? They get cornered by the frog-faced elves again, and are forced to split up. Now, you gonna go quietly? Who do we have to get? Ruff. I like it rough. Huh. Elves are kinda kinky. That's odd. So Mr. Bumpy evades the traps protecting Santa's bag, Indiana Jones style, and then proceeds to steal it while going back on the promises he's made. I get a bad feeling about this. No, not that! Anything but that! Not the giant rolling Santa of doom! <laughs> so Bumpy manages to break his way through the ceiling and land perfectly next to Santa's sleigh with the keys conveniently left in the ignition to be stolen. What is wrong with Santa in this world? As Bumpy takes off with Squish clinging behind, the elves start to fire candy cane missiles at them, easily risking destroying the toys that they are sworn to protect. I can't help thinking I'm forgetting something. <laughs> Mr. Bow! The bag then tears along the way, leaking presents down and somehow delivers them to everyone, including Doris and the General. The reins soon snap, and the sleigh crashes into Mr. Bumpy's house while the reindeer are lost forever, I guess. Everyone at the pageant gets their gifts, including Destructo, who I guess asked Santa for a dominatrix sex robot, thus fulfilling his wish of having the rules obeyed. Wait, just a moment. Y you promised me feet if I helped you, and I did! All that running away and jumping and conniving and pretending to be an evil snowman. I nearly lost my ooze holding off those short people. Gee, Squish, if you can do all that, what do you need feet for anyway? That's what I've been saying! But Squish is rightfully upset by Bumpy's betrayal, so he reluctantly gives him the last present, which just so happens to be a tap-dancing noisemaker. So Bumpy quickly learns that his inadvertent giving brought him joy, and thus discovers how rewarding it is to give rather than to receive. Squish seems to think that Santa had the foresight this would happen, as if he's some sort of clairvoyant celestial god, but I guess that explains why he never shows up in this special. So Bumpy concludes with one final musical number, and Molly apologizes to the group for being so hard on them. Can you all forgive me? No! Wow, way to go from comfort doll to damn it doll. Either way, the other toys soon decide to forgive her, and then Mr. Bumpy questions the existence of Santa since anyone can give presents. Hey, just making it easier to break the news. The closet monster makes a final appearance to give Mr. Bumpy a present to thank him for the tie instead of a nitro facelift. What do you know? He really must have liked those ties I gave him earlier. <gasps> a special collector's edition dirty left foot sock <gasps> with a hole in the toe. Oh, just the way I love them. I'll cherish it forever and ever and always and always. Oh, it'll be the pride of my home, the joy of my life, the very core and meaning of my existence for all eternity. Ah, of course, you know, some things just ain't meant to last. Well, that was Twas the Night Before Bumpy. I might be looking at this through nostalgia-colored glasses, but I still think it's fun. The animation looks good, even though clips are constantly recycled from previous episodes, like I said. The characters are still enjoyable, and the brand of humor is lovable and timeless. 
The overall show is good for older kids, but I still had fun looking back on it today. If you can find the episodes on YouTube or DVD, I would say give them a watch. It's not for everyone, but I still like it okay. This is the Emperor Dude signing off, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. And a much brighter New Year. <laughs>